to curate at the theater in cardboard, in cardboard. Uh, you know how I love theater. I tried to develop, as I told you, many projects around it. But what I knew when I received, you know, this gift, which uh, was certainly the dream of my professional life, not my life, but not my professional life, is that the only legitimacy of power is culture, is culture. Um, it was, and it's still my working plan. Um, sorry, but to quote somebody who, I guess, both of us, we ate for different reasons and maybe for similar reasons, Carl Schmitt. Um, but you know that uh, you can be a big bastard and a great philosopher in your life. But I do like what Schmitt explained, you know, about Hamlet when uh, he explained that the only legitimacy of power is culture. Without power, culture cannot exist. When you become in charge of such an institution, you feel always mortality of politicians and permanence of culture. So it was at the beginning, uh, let's say my target, and I try to keep it straight right now. After this poetic uh, <laughs> approach, I have a very polite question, and it is about the uh, funding, about the fundraising. But, uh, but, but you know, you, you know, the, Suzanne, the, politics is never far from poetics, and this is why I love such an artist as Marcel Bottas, who has always been trying to combine politics and poetics. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. It's hard to ask this question, but I still I have to, even so I would rather <laughs> prefer to talk about Marcel Broda, but I think we have to ask this question about the funding, because it's so painful now for all the museums around the world, uh, with all the losses for because of the lockdown period. So how much time do you have to spend with fundraising, or if at all, or you, you are fully funded by the government? This is... You know, Susan, yes. it, it has always been a mess. It has always been complex because you, we never had the money we requested, despite of the fact that uh, thanks to the French government to uh, give us 100 millions of euros uh, a year. But 55% of this, uh, budget goes to salary. 35% go to the building itself, which means that it remains 10% for cultural and artistic activities. You know, I'm trying always to make a distinction between culture and art, as Jean-Luc Gonard, you know, who explained that Culture is the rule and art is exception. And the most difficult inside the Pompidou is to try to combine the rule and the exception, if you follow what, what I mean. So we need fundraising. Um, I cannot tell you how many hours a day, you know, I'm trying to, uh, to, to have fundraising. Let's say it's part of my job, but which I like to do in a way. We, uh, I, I do not detest, detest to say to people that I belong to a begging order. You know, it's not too pretentious and sometimes it helps. And it's funny to say it in front of our friends, you know, in Israel, because quite a lot of you helped us a lot and are still helping us. But I like that. It's for a good reason. It's not for the bad one, you know, so it's part of our job. So let's say that, uh, well, let's say it's not more difficult now than it was before. Uh, I, I stand always 
uh, I'm an activist. So I'm, I'm always trying to mix everything and to, to convert people to my cause. And uh, fundraising is part of it. Yeah, it is. Uh, Bernard, if I remember properly, correctly, last time we met uh, during the preview days uh, of Documenta in Kassel. Yes. You told me that you are interested in the work of the Israeli artist Roy Rosen. And right. Roy, and I introduce you, I mean, I introduce Roy to you. And I was very pleased and happy that as a, maybe the result of it or not, but there was, a, at, the, at the end, Roy had an exhibition at your institution. And uh, was it the first one-person exhibition at Pompidou or there were others in the past or recently? Well, first, uh, let me thank you again to introduce me to, to Roy. I knew the works before through a friend oh, of yes, common, a common sure friend. Sure, but I knew also the works from a common friend of us, uh, the, the great art critic Jean-Pierre Rem, you know, who is in mm -hmm. charge of cinema in Marseille. I respect him a lot. And uh, I knew Roy's works and Roy's books. And of course, I was deeply, deeply impressed by, uh, you know, his presentation uh, at Documenta. In this Documenta, which I didn't consider as, uh, you know, a real great one, despite of the fact, because I thought that it was a little bit, it was a little bit confused. But anyway, of course, in such a major exhibition, there were a few things. And it seems to me that Roy's work uh, resists and of course I, I wanted to invite him to give an exhibition to to the Pompidou and we did and once again thanks to some of our Israeli friends to help both to build the exhibition and of course to give to the Pompidou this fantastic uh, merchant uh, this this incredibly major piece of uh, Roy, the blind merchant, once again, Shakespeare, you know, uh, which is now in our permanent collection. Collection, but I know. Let me, let me first, to, to try to, to answer to what you said, let me first make a big greeting, uh, a big hug to Yona Fischer, because Yona is maybe the first one who, uh, connected me when I was very young, because I have been young in my life, you know, trust me, uh, who connected me with Israeli artists. And uh, something which I cannot forget, uh, Yona coming at Pompidou, he was very close to Dominique Bozo and sharing his time and explaining, you know, what was the Israeli artistic situation. And something I love, do you know that uh, Yona went to me uh, a year ago and said to me, Bernard, do you remember when I talked to you about Moshe Kupferman? And I say, yes, do you like the work? Yes, I do. So you need the Kupferman in your collection. And let me tell you, it's a scoop that a major piece by Kupferman, uh, with the help of my great friend, Jacqueline Friedman, is going to join the collection in a couple of weeks. So hi to to Yona and thanks for what he, what he does and what what he's still doing. But let me also tell you something else that I have a great difficulties to reason in terms of percentage of quota of uh, you know a nation of something else i like an artist what he does what he says what he develops and sometimes i don't know from where he comes from it happens quite often by the way in our global world and it happened to me uh, you know in south of asia uh, so i have a real difficulty to tell you if Roy was the first Israeli 
Of course not, of course not. But maybe I know, maybe I refuse to answer to your question. Between a global uh, word and a local word, I prefer to think in terms of what Edouard Glissant, you know, the great poet called, uh, let's say, globality. I prefer to talk about globality than globalization. And it seems to me that- What is the difference? Yes, the, what is the difference? Uh, the difference is interconnection. And globalization is a reduction to a common word. So, you know, of course, Roy was not the first. And as I sent you some slides, you could see that in our collection, we have major works from Israeli artists. May I tell you something? Do you know what we are going to do? We are going to plan an exhibition with the fantastic set of photography of Moy Ver, which we ah. just, which we just, another scoop, which we just acquired. And once again, thanks to many friends, as Nathalie Maman Cohen and many others, and Marine Karmit, to help for this incredibly uh, important acquisition. But anyway, from Marcel Yanko to uh, many others, to, to Moiver, from Agam to Absalom, yes, from, uh, and Guy Banner to many others, we have a strong collection of Israeli artists which were actually developing. Is that in the collection? I, uh, I asked about the exhibition, but never mind. I know that you have in the collection many Israeli artists. I know. I am yes. and I of it. That the next one will be the, the, the more mm -hmm. there, and there are many others, you know, which. Uh, I know. I love to consider, despite of the fact that I'm an old guy and I'm going to die, and I have not uh, plenty of time to uh, organize exhibitions at the Pompidou. Yeah. But let once again, Roy Rosen. Um, we invited Roy because I have been impressed by his purpose, uh, his way of being, um, both uh, his psychoanalysis of uh, what Freud uh, called, you know, that's uh, Umbehagen in the culture, uh, in malaise, uh, in civilization. And because of his combination of, may I say, detress and humor. And uh, I do think that I love artists who are combining detress and humor. Uh, and uh, thanks to our Israeli and uh, French friends to help, you know, this uh, fantastic blind merchant uh, for our collection, which you see on the slides. Bernard, I would like to come back to you and uh, going back to the exhibition because the list of your exhibition, I mean, you purity is phenomenal, overwhelming. And even now that you you are such a busy director, you still curate exhibition, like for instance, the acclaimed uh, retrospective of Christian Boltanski, which just closed. And I am asking what it is that you continue, it, what it draws you to continue to curate exhibitions? Well, the answer is very simple. <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, I, I, I love I it. Hear, I and want to hear it from you. Uh, come on, I cannot spend 100% uh, of my time to, uh, you know, to serve the others. I have to serve myself. But let's say that, um, well, why do I do that? To avoid becoming silly uh, or blind, as uh, Roy could say. Um, by the way, Boltanski is such a close friend of mine. Um, uh, it was my first uh, solo exhibition, exhibition at the Pompidou, at the Pompidou right? in 84. So, you yes. know, I, I couldn't imagine 35 years after not to be involved uh, in another one, because it gave me also the possibilities to summarize quite a lot of things which I did uh, between these two, these two dates. And anyway, and it's important to be also close to to the artist and uh, administration has to serve the artist, not the contrary. 
So this is why, you know, I do continue to curate exhibitions. And I'm actually working on another project. I'm actually, yes. Yes, I'm working on many, many projects, but I'm actually working on a project in Paris during, during time of COVID. I wanted to invite very young artists who are living in France, you know, to produce some e ephemeral works, you know, in, in La Villette. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been talking about it with my great friend, Ami Barak, you know, that I consider Ami as a brother. And anyway, we do something. I would love to invite some very young artists uh, to, to, to understand, you know, how they, how they, they, they can react to, you know, to such a crazy uh, context. And uh, I, I want to be among them. Uh, I would like to touch now your exhibition program and I, I understand that actually in March you're supposed to open a major exhibition of Christo and Jean-Claude and then in uh, May uh, Matisse retrospective, a major, major retrospective to celebrate 150 years of his birth. And in June, just tomorrow, after tomorrow, Alice Neal, the American uh, figurative painter, and a group show, a big group show, Global E Resistance. Uh, I already understand that Matisse will postpone to October, but what will happen to other exhibitions once you will reopen the museum? You know, uh, something sad and funny because in my mind, you know, generally it comes together that um, the Christo and Jean-Claude exhibition uh, was supposed to open the day we can find. So I decided to, to postpone it and uh, we are going to open it the 1st of July. Um, and we, we were this also year. of this, this year. year. Yeah, oh. yeah, sure, sure. And uh, I will keep it until mid-October. Um, I'm very close with Christo, he's a major artist, and it is definitely his first museum survey. And uh, anyway, he's an 85 years old guy, and uh, we found a way to open it later and to postpone another exhibition. Um, with the, the Matisse show, uh, which is, as you said, a celebration of his birthday, uh, we found also the way to open it in October. So I will open it in October. Um, I had also many other exhibitions, like the first exhibition of uh, Jeremy Shaw, the Canadian artist, and we are going to keep it open uh, until July. Uh, and uh, you talked about global resistance, um, which is an important exhibition. Um, we try to map uh, the works which take um, as a subject the conflicts uh, of uh, our world. It can be a huge exhibition, as you imagine, uh, that can make a long list. But uh, it's an important exhibition with more than 80 major works which cover, you know, the, the, the world. And this exhibition to me makes sense, especially today. So we find a way to open it maybe in September. There was another exhibition, you talk about Alice Neal. So unfortunately, I couldn't open it as uh, I wished. It was supposed to open, you know, in May. So finally, with the estate and the family, we decided it to postpone it in two years. So the show will open in two years, but the book is ready. And uh, we printed, we already printed the book. So people will see the exhibition, the book, it reminds me the conceptual set Sigalov, you know, from the 70s. Uh, people will see the exhibition in the book before seeing it. And then I, and I had another project which I was supposed to do earlier, 
It's a little, it's a big exhibition with Ito Steihel. You know, ah, yes, the German artist. The German artist. And Kito, finally, um, who is also uh, having an exhibition in Germany, uh, decided to, 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 to make it in Paris in February of the next year. So mm -hmm. everything will happen, everything. This is fantastic. No, no, it's not. It's not because I'm very sad because I was, no, come on. Um, I wanted to open all these exhibitions and uh, in, in this year. And unfortunately, I have to delay some of them at the major retrospective of Baselitz. But all the contemporary, Susan, you have always been in your life quite involved with contemporary art. And I wanted definitely to keep this exhibition. So Ito Steihel is coming. Hassan Khan uh, will start uh, next February of 21. James Coleman will start in uh, June 21 and many, many other exhibitions with contemporary artists, you know, will happen between the end of this year and next year. But basically, most of the projects and exhibition will happen. Even everything, I, everything will happen. Take place. Everything yeah. will happen. Yes. Uh, you know, it's important. Could you imagine that in global resistance, with artists like Ade Agbo, uh, Jonathan Di Andrade, uh, Sami Baloji, Coco Fusco, Machina Raki, many, many others. It's important, you know, to give to people yeah. the possibility to see these exhibitions, despite of the fact that I don't know yet how we are going to organize the visit inside the building. It will be complex, but I can imagine that it will be the same in Israel, in your own institutions. Patient. Patient, patient. 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 Yes, there were some images of the exhibitions, the past exhibitions. And uh, just uh, talking about exhibitions, so I ask you about to which extent you take risk and breaking social and gender taboos, political statement censorship. Actually, I remember very well the exhibition of Adele Abdesmed, um, seen it, and there were some, ex I mean, pieces which were quite controversial. So how does it work? I mean, do you have some, uh, Problems with uh, never, with it? never, never. You mean with censorship? Never. And um, w when we had some, we are totally free. And when uh, and when I had some problems, you know, I've always been helped by the administration without without any any problem and this is something I love for example you know when this stupid American institutions decided to put in storage artists who were supposed to be uh, I don't know what you know like Chuck Close or whatever I decided the day after to hang Chuck Close in the permanent collection you know and uh, I thought that people will react against it and it never happened. But anyway, to summarize the question, let's say that maybe the answer is in the invitation which we gave for the full year to the great Spanish philosopher, Paul Preciado. You know who is Paul Preciado? He is considered today as one of the most uh, activist and uh, uh, clever uh, writer about gender and whatever and political statement. But it's over, you know, gender. It's maybe more uh, a, 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 about a metamorphosis of capitalism. And anyway, we uh, proposed him 
uh, to spend a full year with us. Unfortunately, of course, we needed to, to postpone, you know, his uh, intervention because of what you mean. Uh, but it seems to me that instead of blah, 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 it's maybe better to ask to artists or to ask to people you trust, you know, to come and talk and to explain, you know, what is uh, the content, you know, of their research. And that's why, you know, to be short, um, let's say that such a writer, uh, such also as um, a museum uh, curator, as Paul Preciado, um, is the, the best answer to your question. He is taking risk in his own life when he, uh, as you know, uh, transformed, you know, uh, himself, you know, um, he, he was taking risk all his life by breaking, you know, the taboos, uh, by political statements and by facing in front of censorship. So to me, this is the best answer. Uh, Bernard. How do you see the position of uh, Centre Pompidou in relation to other institutions of modern and contemporary art in, uh, in the city, and especially in, uh, in uh, relation to the private institution like Vuitton Foundation, which has unlimited budget? Are you in competition? Do you collaborate? I am in competition with myself. <laughs> uh, which means that I never considered that these private foundations, these private institutions, uh, that they are doing the same job as we do. Uh, keep in mind that, as I said at the beginning, that we are supposed, you know, to cover uh, the beginning of uh, modernity at the turn of 20th century. It's under discussion, of course, until today. But we have a pedagogical, you know, and quite um, uh, an important um, education, you know, role. Um, we are a national institution, Susan, which yes. means that uh, it gives Absolutely. you, it gives you, um, you know, uh, both a, a strong position and a huge uh, responsibility, responsibility. And uh, I never considered, you know, uh, that uh, uh, we were uh, looking for the same, you know, things than these private institutions, despite of the fact that, for example, we are planning a Charles Ray exhibition, which was supposed to come next year. And as maybe you know, to take an example, uh, François Pinault is the, the biggest collector of Charles Ray. So I went to him and we decided to do two exhibitions in the same time. One in his building, of course, Charlie, the artist, will be totally involved in it. And another one at the Pompidou, one in a 19 wonderful renovated building and the one in the Pompidou. And anyway, it will give two keys to get inside the works, two locations, two kinds of approach. Um, you know, we, are, we need to move from an old model. Uh, it's a little bit like in capitalism. Capitalism is moving from an old model of buyers and sellers to providers and users. Uh -huh. And if you keep it in mind, you know, it can help. Uh, I like to read Jeremy Rifkin, you know, but it seems to me that it can help, you know, to invent. I'm not going to say a new business model, because if I, you know, I would never tell something like that as a museum director. But anyway, let's say that there is something which you can learn and um, we need to go faster than we went before. Before. And to be, to be reactive, to be more reactive. 
uh, it becomes a real it becomes Absolutely. a real challenge it becomes a real challenge when you become older that's why you know, i love to work with very young people around myself bernard Topen, the center for Pompidou opened a new branch, a regional branch, the Center Pompidou Metz. The idea, yeah. as I understand, to expand the display of contemporary art outside Paris, but also to maybe educate or develop the periphery. How do you see it? I mean, was it a right decision? You know, uh, Susan, I like to be honest. At the beginning, I was quite skeptical, and I thought mm -hmm. that it was uh, just a, a political, you know, ID. But I must confess that it is extremely successful. The quality of the exhibitions, the location, which is close to Germany, uh, the, the impact of uh, our collection. Keep in mind that we are just exhibiting 5% of the collection. So all these things, um, you know, brought me in uh, uh, from a skeptical uh, position to a very, uh, you know, confident position. The building is nice. It has been, as you can see, designed by the great Japanese architect Shigeru Ban. Uh, mm -hmm. The level of the exhibition is absolutely international. And could you imagine then more than 400,000 people a year wow. is visiting the institution? Of course, it's not the Pompidou. The Pompidou is three millions and a half. But, uh, well, um, I guess um, it was also an answer to the regional, you know, um, situation of France. You know, the people is always explaining that France is very Jacobin, which is true, which is true. And uh, anyway, to open um, an institution, you know, in such a region, uh, finally, you know, brought uh, um, something which is important um, to have a step on the side and to reconsider what you do uh, from an outsider point of view. Um, actually, you know, uh, after Laurent Le Bon. Uh, Emma Lavigne uh, has been in charge of it, and we have a, a, a new uh, curator, Chiara Parisi. Uh, she's great, and she's extremely connected to, to, to the artist, and she wants, you know, to develop productions with the artist. So what can I do? I would love to, I would love to help, but in one way, I learn from them more than learn from me. Bernard, can you get to the, it's for, I mean, Mets, but then um, how do you relate to the expansions of Pompidou beyond the borders of France? What is the concept or idea behind them? The Museum of Diplomacy to write the profile abroad. Why, no. why Brussels? Now at the beginning, once again, <laughs> we need to be honest. We have this fantastic collection, which remains uh, despite of the fact that we rotate it, you know, quite a lot of time. As you know, I tried. When you asked me what was my first goal, my first goal when I took my position was definitely with the team to rotate the collection and mm -hmm. to use the collection as a tool, as a tool to question different things, you know. And anyway, we did it inside the Pompidou and we found the opportunity to do it in different places. Sometimes people went to us, like the Meyer in Malaga, in south of Spain, who say that he would like to be, uh, uh, to be involved, you know, in uh, contemporary activities. So we've built this small institution, which is, as you see with the Buren piece in the main entrance, you know, in Malaga, which is also successful. Uh, 1,000 people a day. It's not bad, 1,000 people a day, you know. In, a day. Uh, in, in the city where was born Picasso. Um, it's um, also exciting because it gives the possibility to develop 
some relationships with um, uh, the artists of uh, the region, with mm -hmm. the curators, and anyway. So it's, it's an example. Uh, Brussels is much more important because keep in mind that Brussels is the European capital. And as the European capital, uh, they went to me and they proposed me to do something with them. When I went to this incredibly fantastic garage, uh, which is going to be converted into uh, an institution, I had in mind that it could be a possibility to reinvent, not to duplicate, but to reinvent the spirit of the Pompidou. Uh, and I'm totally involved with it. Uh, we are going to open at the end of September. Once again, we needed to postpone something. A big project with John Amlede, who invited artists, friends, who is going to explain what he tried to do with the invention of ECAR, you know, this association which he built in the early 70s. So once again, it will be one place where you share informations and where you give to people, you know, the possibility to cross, to cross, you know, different adventures. Uh, so, of course, it was also a money question. Of course, we were happy to sell our exhibitions. How we were, of course, we were happy to find a solution to use, you know, our collection. So once again, it's a little bit Rifkin, you know, who um, can help. Uh, as I told you, without talking about a business model and people, uh, but it seems to me that people who are moving faster than the other will have some possibilities in our, uh, in our world. In, the problem also is, is political. Uh, there is, to me, a big danger to become local. Everybody today say, well, we need to come back and um, to serve the soup, as we, friend, we say in French, to all kinds of nationalism. And as you can imagine, I'm fighting against nationalism. And it seems to me that uh, one good way to, to, to develop something uh, in another dimension is, uh, of course, uh, to develop some, some projects uh, in another context than the one where you were supposed uh, to, uh, mm -hmm. to work. Uh, uh, despite of the times that sometimes I feel a little bit like Michel Welbeck, you know, uh, who wrote that everything after Corona uh, will come back as before in worse. So let's say that we need to fight against this worse. The new Shanghai branch, Centre Pompidou X Westbound Museum, designed by the esteemed architect David Chipperfield, was opened in November 2019 in the presence of your president, Emmanuel Macron. And the question is, is it one of the roles of the national museums to promote political and commercial interests of the country or were there other reasons for it? Everything comes together, Susan. Shall we see, shall we see first the little film and then maybe talk? Sure, sure. So people will see. <laughs>
The music is ridiculous. Uh, uh, the music is the, the typical uh, Frenchy, uh, froggy, uh, uh, stupid uh, 19th century, petite femme de Paris. It's absolutely ridiculous. But the museum itself is beautiful. Um, and you know something, Suzanne, this is your job all your life. Um, to install a collection in another context uh, gives definitely another uh, dimension to what you do. The building we've built with, um, with uh, David, David is a great architect, you know, is a simple answer mm -hmm. to what we wanted to, to do uh, at the beginning. Once again, it's not only globalization and business and whatever, you know, it's also globality versus globalization. You know, uh, the Chinese art scene is extremely uh, exciting. There are many things to do. It reminds me when a long time ago, Ami Barak went to China and said to me, Bernard, Bernard, uh, you need to pay attention to what happens to China. So anyway, I did. And finally, we found this possibility to, um, to develop something as an experimentation. Um, one word which I never forget, you know, experimentation, which means that maybe this museum is not forever, no more than I am. But let's say that for a few years, you can test, you can try to do things, you can cooperate, you can try to develop, you know, relationships with artists. By the way, in the meantime, we are going to invite many Chinese artists to work in Paris. As in the same time, we send artists um, in, uh, in China. But for example, we are planning an exhibition. We just closed, unfortunately, uh, too uh, short, uh, a, an amazing exhibition, which was uh, the dialogue between China and Africa. Uh, the, the show has been curated by a young curator in my team who is totally connected with Africa and who discovered in Africa the impact of Chinese culture. And we made an exhibition of it, which was absolutely exciting. As we are preparing something with Xu Bing, who is a great artist, you know, and who is not, uh, you know, politically correct, definitely not. And once again, um, if I want to tell the truth, we found a way to do different exhibitions from Chinese artists in China and in France, which are extremely, uh, you know, uh, corrosive. Um, we are doing something with Ang So next year. As you know, I am extremely, uh, uh, happy to work with my deep friend, Catherine David, uh, who is deputy director with me at the Pompidou. And Catherine, uh, she is an explorer. And anyway, she, she went to different Chinese artists or uh, many artists from South of Asia. And she, she brought me a lot of ideas. And uh, let's say that uh, it is an exploration. Um, and uh, let's say in a few years, what will be the result? Bernard, maybe last question, I think, because the time it runs. Um, briefly, I would like just to relate to Paris art scene, which rolls back to life in the last years, and the art market, the fiat, uh, American galleries open new spaces. And as you mentioned before, Pino will open his new space. And so what you think, it's like a museum, right? But still, you think it will continue? What will happen up in the post-corona era? I hope it will not collapse. It will just slowly, slowly come back to life. I hope. Because it's a really special and exciting, exciting situation right now in Paris. You know, Susan, uh, we cannot uh, do everything but everybody has to play his role. Uh, this last Sunday, two days ago, uh, 
a large part of galleries reopened. Uh, I was a, a little bit mm. tired, but I decided to 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 go there, and uh, I saw a lot of energy. I crossed uh, a lot of people who were totally, you know, involved in what they do. I crossed a lot of collectors, and despite of the fact that for a few months it will be difficult, I do think that if each of us uh, believes has a real expectation, if you do not have any expectation, go to bed. But if you have an, expe an expectation, you know, and if you believe, I'm not going to say that art is going to save the world, I am not naive, but if you believe in, in the power of art in such um, a difficult society, if you do um, each in our place what we can do, you as a, a curator, a writer, and giving these talks with your friends, me uh, helping with the friends of the Pompidou who decided to give all the money of the year to uh, the French artistic context to help the artists, to help the, the other, uh, uh, to help the institutions. Uh, if the government, which is going to do, of course, a lot of, to give a lot of support to, to, to not only to, to, to the visual art thing, but also to, to the cinema, to the theater, and anyway, to all the cultural contexts. If all of us, we do what we are able to do, this crisis wouldn't be more uh, terrible than many others, which happened before, which happened before. Mm. And there is something in my mind um, which comes back to me. Come on, as Jewish people, these are not the first crises which we've seen just in 20th century. And look, we found solutions. Uh, we found possibilities to reinvent ourselves. And I believe in it. I believe in it. And let's say that where I am until I am, with our friends, um, there is a, a strong friendship. There is a strong friendship. We will do our best. Let me give you an example. Um, a few weeks ago, uh, one of our members, uh, a wonderful lady, I don't give her name because maybe she doesn't want to, uh, to give it, said to me, Bernard, I like to, to give to, to, to the Pompidou, a set of works of the French artist Loris Gréau. And she said to me, I cannot give all the money, but I can give a lot of money um, to, to Gréau for your collection. But there were 40,000 euros which were missing. So I called one of our common friends, Suzanne. I don't want to give the name again, huh? just to respect you know this. Uh, and I told him, Jean, his first name is Jean. It's a common name. He has a many Jean, you know. Jean, I need your help. He said to me, okay, immediately. So Loris, the artist, you know, gave a discount of 50%. Uh, his gallery, Max Etzler, which is also in Paris, uh, you know, renounced, you know, to uh, its percentage. The lady gave almost 80% of the budget and Mr. Jean gave, uh, you know, the rest. Anyway, I believe in life and uh, it seems to me that uh, tomorrow will be another day. I hope Bernard. not in worse. Bernard, I think that there are a few questions from the audience, and I would like to forward now to Sahar, who is getting those questions from the audience, and then I, I will come to Sahar, please. 
Okay. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Mr. Blisten. Uh, we have a question from uh, Aya Luria, uh, which is, she is the um, Herzliya Museum Director and it's a uh, chief curator. Aya, are, are you with us? I am. Aya? Mm -hmm. Yes, hello. Hi. Is it okay? Can you hear me? Sure, I do. Okay. So good evening and thank you Susan and Bernard for giving this open-hearted talk and uh, before asking my question I have this comment to say regarding your official you mentioned him so we are working on some collaborations and the next ex project exhibition that Yona will exhibit will be open on September 12th at our museum so I could totally understand um, those words that you mentioned regard Yona. We love Yona. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, an inspiration. And Definitely. now for my question. And now for my question. So I'm thinking about three factors regard museums today. You mentioned some of them, of course, in your talk. I'm thinking about populism, the trends of nationalism. We could think about Poland and Hungary, the way they deal with contemporary art museum today. We, I think about globalism, the way that tourists museum into touristic sites. Millions are, of course, we are all welcome, a lot of visitors, but they're also giving the, the solo individual experience quite a challenge. And I think about the economy, the raising rates and and prices of contemporary art, which is totally differ from the situation of the, of the singular player, the artist, the contemporary strug struggling young artist. And I was wondering, of course, all those three factors um, was dominant before COVID-19 COVID uh, uh, pandemic. But thinking now, and I would like to hear your thoughts about how we could make contemporary museum more humanistic today. Well, you know, um, I hope that after Corona, but once again, it's an expectation that we will be strong uh, enough not to come back to business as usual. Uh, once again, let's see. But, you know, during the confinement, as many of us, I spent time uh, reading. And uh, I read, you know, Jacques Derrida's uh, book uh, about hospitality. And uh, this book, you know, gave me quite a lot of uh, perspectives, which I would like to apply in my uh, daily life inside the institution. Um, for example, it seems to me that, as I mentioned before, education has to be stronger than ever. In France, I don't know how it is in Israel, but there is unfortunately a big gap between Ministry of Culture and uh, Ministry of uh, Artistic uh, of um, Education. And unfortunately, this gap has never been reduced. So it seems to me that, and I give you two simple examples, because we can start to preach and whatever, you know, and it becomes ridiculous. Um, we decided first to develop a center of research for uh, artists inside Bibliothèque Kandinsky. You know that we have this huge, uh, you know, uh, public library inside the Pompidou. Of course. Uh, and anyway, we will transform a large part of the library to become a research center. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that I had to found 
to find the money, which, which I did. It's, once again, it's never enough. If there is anybody who wants to give me money, please, please, uh, <laughs> I'll send you my mail. Um, but anyway, uh, so it is a first answer. Something else, because of the fact that people uh, cannot visit the museum for the next months, you know, as usually, we decided to build small groups of people no more than 10 mm. and each of this group uh, will be followed by a curator an assistant curator or um, you know somebody who is going to give a talk uh, to try to connect you know what they are expecting for and what we can discern for them so um, I'm not so afraid with what you call populism in my country. I'm terrified uh, in Hungary, in Poland, in, in many other countries. But for example, my friend from Hungary went to me and said to me that he would like to do something with us. There were two issues. Uh, either I refused because of the political conte uh, context, or I agreed to do something because I believe in one way in the power of art. So we decided, I told him, please no names of any fucking politic people on, on the invitation or whatever, you know? Okay. And he's, yeah. he, agreed, he agreed with that. But we're going to do something with our collection together. Uh, I don't want to, to use this word resist resistance you know sometimes you know it brings me back to my family and to the past and anyway and i i am quite it's a different uh, situation yes uh, and we are in a different situation but once again i tried i i went too fast but once again to explain which was for me the the the, the distinction between globality and globalization. Globality is definitely an idea uh, which is uh, which comes, as I mentioned before, from Edouard Glissant, you know, and uh, which is against the homogeneiz homogenization of our world. Uh, and uh, well, once again, as everybody knows, there is something to articulate between local and global. But of course, not to simplify and to reduce the things to uh, a single model. That's why, you know, sorry, because my answer is a little bit, you know, uh, it seems to me that we need to connect people. Connection is important. Connection is important. And connection is one way to resist, to know what, uh, to, to this global world where people want to unify everything under the umbrella of the market. This we know. Thank you. Thank oh, you very much. Thank you. Hope to, see, hope to see you in Israel or in France. I would like to thank Bernal. Your talk was really enlightening and I, I personally enjoyed it very much. Thank you for taking time, and we learn a lot from you, from uh, your position, your museum, what's going on, your plans and plans. I wish you great success and uh, good luck with the reopening and with all your projects you are planning. And uh, you said, I think once I heard that you said you are ambitious, and you have to be ambitious, and the program is ambitious. And I wish you really great, great success with it. And I hope to cooperate with you as we do. Uh, I learned a lot by meeting some of your curators. Um, I keep in mind many visits, you know, which I had in, 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 in your country. Uh, thanks to Ami, uh, who brought me to Israel. I never forgot it. Uh, and thanks to all of you for, I mean, for your joy and your confidence in life. This is definitely what we need 
you know, to protect. Absolutely. Thank you very much.